Hey guys, my name is Steve Sanders. And I'm Brittany Barella, and this is Cummins Repower Garage. We're here with the new R2.8 liter turbo diesel crate engine from Cummins Repower. We're here to talk about what's in the box, what you can expect if you're thinking about buying one of these, or if you have bought one uh, and you haven't unpacked it yet. Walk through all the kit contents, uh, some basic overviews of installation tips and tricks, as well as some of the other things that we provide with this crate engine, like quick serve online uh, and access to other things like Cummins product registration. So step one, if you're thinking about buying a crate engine or have already bought a crate engine, is to read the installation manual. It's going to get shipped to you in the box or separately when you buy the engine, but you can also access it online at CumminsRepower.com. Definitely read through the installation manual in full. Make sure you understand everything that's involved with doing the installation uh, and making sure that you can do it safely. Uh, we take safety very seriously. Uh, if you uh, don't have an engine yet, go to CumminsRepower.com and download the installation guide and you can check some of that stuff out. Um, Make but this... sure you're comfortable with everything in there and definitely consult a professional if there's anything that you don't understand or you're not comfortable with doing yourself. So these bands are under tension, so you'd never want anyone standing uh, beside you when you snap them just like that. Okay. Alright, so now you see this nice blue bag. This is a moisture wicking bag. Uh, it helps protect your engine during storage. So if you're not quite ready to install it when you get it, you'll be okay for a little while here. Uh, packed around the base of the engine, you'll see your various boxes. So we're going to set these off to the side, come back to those later. But step one, get them all laid out, get them accounted for, and we'll go over and make sure that you have everything that you're supposed to have. All right, so one, two, three, four, five boxes. We'll get into those in a minute. There's a zip tie on your bag here. And then, voila. So, this engine uh, does come with a Fiat. It comes with your alternator, power steering pump, uh, uh, cam driven vacuum pump all that good stuff already installed on the engine the one thing is not installed but it is zip tied to the engine is the belt so this belt is ready to go on uh, no adjustments need to be made um, also your ECM is kind of zip tied onto the engine yep. and then you want to kind of get move that out of the way before you do your install uh, just for safekeeping so you'll simply Undo that clip. Getting that ECM out of the way, uh, putting it in a safe place during your install so you're not welding or grinding or anywhere near it. That's your central nervous system for this engine. And there is no cap for that second part that you take the connector off of, so make sure no moisture or dirt or dust gets in there as well. And it's not a bad idea if it's gonna be a lengthy install, which it, none of us plan on that being the case, but it tends to happen. It's important to protect this. So you have all these small pinholes here that could get a lot of dust and debris in if your installation is going to take a long time. So recommend putting a plastic bag and a zip tie, keeping that nice and dry and dust free. Uh, the other things you'll notice uh, that you might end up having to remove during your installation and put back on after it's set in the frame rails is this engine mounted uh, diesel oxidation catalyst. So you've got a couple of cap screws here that you can reference in the installation guide or if you want to take it apart at the V-band clamp. One of the other bits here that you will probably end up moving around during your installation is this remote mount oil filter. So that is not the permanent location of that oil filter. It's supposed to get installed on the chassis. Uh, it just comes on the engine for shipping and so when you're doing your installation, uh, so you're going to want to get that out of the way as you're installing the engine into your vehicle. Alright, so that's about everything that is fastened to the crate. So now we'll go over and do a deeper dive into those boxes that we unpacked uh, from the bottom. All right, so part of what makes the R2.8 liter unique is that it is a package. So all these other boxes have a lot of goodies in it that really help simplify your installation. So we're just going to start 
down the line so you're gonna see what is in each box and help you inventory what's in your kit. So this first one, the biggest one, it's covered in plastic uh, as you saw when we unpacked it. It's got our fuel filter head and fuel filter water separator in it, wrapped in plastic. So uh, for each of these components, we're gonna do deep dive videos. So check those out. We'll go into more uh, detailed information later. So we've got this guy in here. And then the other thing that you wanna make sure you don't throw away from that box is a pair of MAF sensor screws and your MAF sensor itself. So it can kind of get lost in the bubble wrap that's in this box. So be sure that you're not throwing these things away because you really need that to get your engine running. So your MAF sensor stands for mass airflow and it gets installed in this tube. And this tube was specially designed to work with our calibration in the engine ECM and it measures the amount of fresh airflow coming into the engine and gives you the correct ratio of EGR to fresh air. So you definitely wanna make sure you're using this tube or designing your own that has the exact same dimensions as this to make sure it works with our engine calibration. And there are arrows on the tube and the MAF sensor for the direction of airflow. So as you're getting that installed in your vehicle, make sure you pay attention to those arrows. Yeah, we'll show you a couple installations of that actually installed in the vehicle. Um, this little box right here has clamps for your MAF tube. So one for the air filter side, one going toward the compressor. And then to finish out what we're offering for the fuel system, we have these handy little quick disconnects uh, for both the high pressure common rail fuel line, the pump fuel lines rather, uh, on the engine, and then the actual uh, fittings for the fuel pump head. So next box is your wiring harness. So this is kind of the engine to vehicle wiring harness. There's a couple different components that come in this box. Uh, first one is the Murphy gauge or the J1939 gauge. And you can install that in your vehicle and it just reads out engine vitals as well as fault codes. You also have your grid heater solenoid. So when you're operating your engine, in cold weather, that will make your grid heater cycle and heat up your intake air for when you're doing cold starts. You also have the wiring for said grid heater solenoid, so make sure you're using these anytime you have a high amperage current. And these are different. They might look the same, but one does have this fusible link. It's not a repaired cable that we're sending you. Uh, that is actually intentional. So. And then this kind of mess of wires in here comes in two pieces. It's not a mess. It's not a mess, it's just in two pieces, if I can separate them. Yep. And so you have your in-cab side of your wiring harness as well as your engine compartment side of your wiring harness. And then lastly, along with your wiring harness comes your accelerator pedal. And so this is electronically controlled accelerator pedal. So you do wanna make sure that you're using the one that we provide in our kit. Again, it works with our engine calibration. Um, so you install that in the place of your factory accelerator pedal. So just a quick overview of everything you should have uh, before you get started. Uh, you should have your MAF tube, MAF sensor, screws, the two clamps to go with this. You should have your fuel filter uh, set up and quick disconnects, grid heater wiring, Murphy gauge for your interior, the interior half of your harness, the underhood half of your harness, and then your throttle pedal. But again, one of the coolest things about the kit is this information pack. And I know that sounds goofy to say like paper is cool, but it really is. This guy is your printed installation guide. So everything that this video series covers is based on what is in that book or what is available online as a PDF at CumminsRepower.com. Also have yeah. your owner's manual, kind of goes along with your installation guide. Again, also available online at QuickServe, which we'll just talk about in a little bit. And then we have a nice quick startup guide here. So kind of a checklist as you're uh, at two in the morning, so close to starting your engine. Uh, we wanted to make sure you didn't forget some of the critical things like the engine doesn't have oil in it. Don't Definitely. ruin your new engine by starting it with no oil in it. So kind of if a pre-flight check. If you read nothing, check. read this. Yeah, read this <laughs> before you do anything, no matter how good of a mechanic you think you are. Uh, 
And then this guy, this is where you can fill out your personal information uh, that we use when we need to contact you for important product updates, whether it be a future calibration release to improve some performance uh, after the thing's been on the road for a while and we've gotten customer feedback, or if there's a safety campaign or anything like that, this is how we get a hold of you. So you can either go to the website uh, through product registration or through the QuickServe website, or you can do this via snail mail. So the QuickServe website is a free resource that we offer to all of our customers. You are going to register for that using the ESN off of the data plate on your valve cover. Uh, but on that website, once you register, all the, the details for registering are in your Quick Start Guide. But once you go there, you have all the latest and greatest versions of your installation manual, of your owner's manual. Uh, you can do fault code research, so if your Murphy gauge reads out a fault code, you can troubleshoot that all through QuickServe. It is the tool that all common certified technicians use when they're doing any service or troubleshooting. So you get that, you know, as soon as you buy your R2.8, you get that same free resource. So definitely check that out. It's a really valuable tool as you're doing your installation, but also once your vehicle's on the road. Yeah, so that wraps up our first series of Cummins Repower Garage. We just wanted to show you what all was in the kit. Uh, make sure you understood what to expect when you're unpacking your own kit. Uh, and we look forward to future episodes where we do a deep dive into each of these systems and chapters in the installation guide.